Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am super excited to show you this game. This is the bronze match for third place of the 2022 World Tournament, and the players have played this game, sent me the log, but have I have not watched it. So I have the pleasure of getting to watch this with you for the first time. I'll analyze it as we go. And the two players are Vaze and Romp Steel. Romp Steel placed higher in the Swiss portion of the tournament, and therefore they get to pick which side they want to play, and they've chosen to play free people. This is a base game with no action tokens. If the players go one and one, then the third game will use action tokens, but for this game, it's just straight up base game. So let's jump right in. Thank you very much to um, the players for giving me the opportunity to show their game. All right, uh, here we go. So uh, starting card draws, we have um, Fighting Urkai. I mean, I like that for Shadow if they get, um, if they get Rohan, uh, I mean, if they go after Rohan early, that can be certainly a useful card. I like also, I will go alone because it gives some options for early Aragorn. We'll see if that happens. All right, so Shadow allocates one eye and rolls only one muster. Obviously not great. You always want to roll two if you can, but at least there are a good number of attacks there, so hopefully that'll be okay. And oh my gosh, what crazy rolls! In the in the game one of the finals, there were there was also a crazy starting roll for for free people. So this is just an amazing, very unlikely, right? Two, four, eight, sixteen. One out of sixteen chance that you get no movement. That is really quite unlikely. All right, so we'll see what they do with it. Um, certainly not great. All right, so Shadow starts by drawing a card. I think that makes sense because what else are you going to do with that Palantir? I guess you could play Ring is Mine, but I like drawing. That's nice. And then they move Shadow armies. So they're getting, it seems like they're going towards Gondor. Um, Free People moves armies to Westamnet and Old Forest Road. Certainly reasonable. I might consider start mustering first. I mean, given the low amount of musters from Shadow, you could get you could get elves to war. You could get I don't know if you want elves to war, but all right. So we're going. Shadow is moving toward um, gets this army gathered in Mornon. Maybe they're thinking about going towards the dew line that would be my inclination as as shadow um given that i have low musters early on so i think that makes i think that makes a lot of sense you have army movement so you can get your armies up north in position fairly easily all right uh free people mustered elves towards war once and Shadow went with Isengard. There's some possibility that you might want to muster Sauron towards war, um, but I think Isengard is a very reasonable play also. But now at this point, I think you might seriously consider as free people getting elves to war, because it just, it just looks to me like these armies are coming up to do. I guess we'll see. All right, moving one army out. That's interesting. So, I mean, if free people has scouts, then I would be more inclined to risk this regular. Um, it does sort of annoy these two armies and, and will eventually give you presumably a muster. Um, I wonder, though, if you just actually muster the elves once. Does that, does that do more? Um, and is there a productive half movement that you can make? Maybe Iron Hills into Erebor, maybe Osgiliath into Minas Tirith, I'm not sure. Um, maybe Westamnet into Helm's Deep. Could all be okay. Um, what's interesting, this is, I guess, a minor inaccuracy by Shadow that they went to North Anduin Vale instead of South Anduin Vale, because this way you can sort of circumvent it. If they went to South Anduin Vale, then they could circumvent it and go to Parth Celebrant. I don't know. This, this is an interesting play, and that's because it's only possible because Sauron isn't at war yet. 
All right, and then they merge up in Fords of Eisen. That's that's reasonable. Um, I always worry when I do this that I'm going to end up having to make an extra movement to retreat out of Fords of Eisen into Helm's Deep if an army from Mordor ends up um, going to Helm's Deep. But, all right, so armies moving, shadow armies moving, and elves get one away from war, and then Nazgul moving? What? Why did Nazgul just move? I don't understand that. I, I mean, yeah, you do kind of want to have Nazgul up there, but... I could have I could have used it as an army movement. I I I'm surprised by that. I would have expected an army movement there. All right, um, Mithrakot and Sting is a little early for for free people. You don't want to see that. Book of Mazarbul could be useful. Um, certainly with like I will go alone and Book of Mazarbul. Now I can have kind of weird action die rolls, action dice rolls, and still get. Strider, I mean Aragorn, like I could with a Palantir, Palantir character, Will of the West, you can, you can get there. Um, or, or like Palantir muster character, Will of the West, and you can get Strider without giving any rings. So, and basically any role with a Will of the West, if you're willing to spend a ring, uh, can get you there very likely all right um let's see what shadow draws shadow draws new power is rising this is beautiful so new power is rising plus the early fighting urukai is quite nice um though you do need to get saruman in play so depending on what what the chances are of gandalf being killed off this round you may end up not being able to play this this round all right, one eye allocated, even though there was no movement. I, I think that makes sense. And two more eyes, but at least they get two musters, so that's good. So they'll be able to get Saruman, and they'll be able to uh, get Sauron to war. And again, just a lot of musters for free people. And, you know, this is kind of a situation where, what if the elves were just at war here? Then you could just start mustering up in Lorien. All right. Again, more army movement. I'm surprised that that's more army movement uh, and not simply just more mustering, straight up mustering. Um, Sauron is not at war right now. So if you muster the elves, then you get an elite into Lorien. I realize, I guess Dimrald Dale is going to get attacked. Um, and so you don't want to waste that, but all right. Okay. Interesting. Take back. Okay. Unlikely. F well, okay. Elves are at war. <laughs> all right. So uh, it's funny. All right. So they ended up taking it back and putting elves to war. And I think that's a little bit of an acknowledgement that this move to Dimrald Dale was a mistake. Um, but sometimes you make mistakes and, and if you can, and if you can make it right, or at least, you still want to make the best plays that you can given the current situation on the board. So um, I do think that makes sense. But, you know, if this had been a muster. OK. Um, all right. And now Shadow is attacking into Dimrald Dale and uh, right realizes that Shadow uh, Sauron has to get to war. Sauron is now at war. Now elves are mustering up into Lorien. Dimrald Dale gets attacked. Got one total overkill, four sixes and a five, five hits. Yeah, save those sixes for later. Um, okay, and uh, now you get four elites into into uh, into Lorien, which I think is great. And then what's happening here? Fellowship is moving, and they're safe. And now, what the... Wow, Eastern Emin Wheel with this army. Did not expect that. Does Shadow have some Shadows Gathering? or? All right, so I guess this army is going to come towards Helm's Deep or to come help out Lorien. I, I don't know where this army is going. 
I, I would not normally expect this path, but I guess I guess we'll see. All right, and then we draw cards. Also, if you were gonna move an army, we had a second army from Nern into Gorgoroth. Why didn't? Are we gonna try and take Lorien as Shadow, or we're just not gonna, not gonna even try? I am. I'm excited to see what what Shadow ends up doing. Uh, Dane, I think, is nice to see. It's just a good, um, good defensive resource if Erebor gets attacked. Um, one eye again, and then even more musters. So this is this is good for Shadow, and then Free People gets a little bit of movement and maybe can uh, manage to kill off Gandalf. This is also exactly a situation where you could get Strider. So so this could be you could get Strider and and you could get. Um, dwarves to war and in fact in fact this is this is cool what you could do if you don't care about getting the dwarves to war you can move once which gets you to two movement and then uh you can play i will go alone with the palantir die which gets you two movement from your fellowship track three movement from striders level plus one movement from i will go alone that's six movement so that gets you to um drew with ir if somebody has a pronunciation for that please please share it in the comments and then um and then the muster die to uh play book of mazarbal getting strider into dual amroth and then um and then will of the west to crown him and if you end up taking a little bit of corruption with your first move, you get hit but not revealed, you can end up healing that with I Will Go Alone. And you get to redraw a card, a character card with Gandalf. So there are some really cool options for free people with this role. I don't know that they're going to do it, um, but I kind of like the idea of moving once, seeing what happens. If you get hit, you can find if you want to lose, lose Gandalf. Um, or if you want to, you can go for Strider right away. Um... All right, well, let's see what happens. And Shadow, what did Shadow draw? King is revealed, not useful at the moment. Um, and Wormtongue, also, I would say not useful, but maybe, maybe you end up playing it. Um, you don't have any uh, character dice to play this with, so I don't, I don't think this is likely to get played. All right, so Free People starts off by moving, and they get missed. So this is a chance... Um, to for for free people to get um get strider i don't know that they will or to get everyone but they could all right so the muster um brings in new powers rising that's all obviously really great and then um rage of the dunlandings here interesting where are they going are they gonna go I don't know where they're going. Maybe it's just we're taking out Rohan. Maybe maybe they're going to the Shire. Maybe they're trying to go and deal with um, the Elves, even though the Elves are already at war. Um, you got a lot of units right in here, so they can do something. Um, one thing to realize is with this Rage of the Dunlings, we're going to have no uh, regulars in the Force Pool. And so if you end up wanting to reduce an elite to press or, or for whatever reason, take one damage to an elite, you can't. Um, and it'll just get completely eliminated. Now, because of Saruman's ability to upgrade two regulars into two elites, I, I don't think that's going to be a real issue. But the one other thing, one other comment about using Rage of Dunlendings here, I, it'll be interesting to see where Shadow goes with it. I'm excited to see that. But I'm inclined to... Um, save cards like this for musters or palantir results because th this is an actual army result that could be used to get your armies into position um where otherwise a palantir or a muster could not and so i think that's one of the real powers of rage of dunlendings as a card effect i mean obviously it's good army mobility and so it's not crazy to play it here and they have really a nice number of attacks this round so all of that makes sense but I wonder if there's more maneuvering, slightly more efficient maneuvering I could be doing first. Like, where, what is this army doing? Can I just get it to go wherever it's supposed to be going? Um, so, 
All right, I guess we will we will see what happens. And um, also remember, they're going to need to spend one muster to get the Witch King this round. All right, so they go to Gap of Rohan. I, that's okay. Um, a ring, interesting. So yeah, so so Shadow uh, Free People are trying to kill off Gandalf to um, because they have a Will of the West here, and you know I I think that makes sense. Um, it's nice to keep the fellowship moving, but I don't love, um, I don't love it because it does give shadow, it does give shadow a ring. And this is now going to be my third movement. Like, I, I guess they're, they're going to be, pre if they get revealed, they could go into Moria and be more likely to kill off Gandalf. But given that I had a path in my hand, uh, I will go alone to, to and redraw a character card to get um, Strider and to crown Aragorn and Gondor basically is not seeing any pressure. Um, I would be really tempted to do that and just leave Gandalf a little bit longer. All right. Um, I mean, the nice thing about killing off Gandalf is that you could then bring Gandalf back in Grey Havens and then get the Dwarves Tour with Book of Mazarbul. So that that is a nice thing. I, I also, it seems like Rohan is also going to be attacked, so getting Gandalf into Fangorn to maybe slow down um, Rohan a little bit could be good, but... Yeah, and this is interesting. We have Path of the Woeses. So do I really mind that much if Rohan goes to war and um, I muster up a bit in Edoras and then bring this army somewhere with Path of the Woeses? All right, let's see what happens. So we get moved, and there's a miss. So this is the other reason why I like the the Strider play crowning Aragorn a little bit better, just because it's guaranteed. You know, it's it's um, it's pretty likely you're going to get hit. I don't remember exactly what it is with three dice on fives, but it's not it's not a hundred percent, obviously. Um, maybe seventy percent. I don't remember. Okay, so safe movement, um, and now shadow attacks. Into Fords of Eisen, uh, presumably from Orthanc, and uh, oh, Shadow plays. So, I mean, Free People play Sudden Strike here. I I don't I don't like that. Really, there was no there was no card played. I, I realize you're going to end up discarding cards, but it seems like you don't really care about. I will go alone anyway. Um, and maybe you're going to draw two bad cards. And if Rohan is getting attacked, Path of the Woes is, is, can really be a thorn in Shadow's side. Um, all right. So they do get a hit, though. That's nice. And um, Shadow gets three hits. Three hits into Fords of Eisen. And free people get two back. And and this is a this is a moment where I think well, should I have just moved them directly into Helm's Deep because I ended up risking more uh, hit points in Fords of Eisen? I don't know. Tough call. All right. So uh, Shadow moves and leaves two units behind in Orthanc. That's a very weird number to me because an Ent can still uh, definitely kill that. I guess they'll get upgraded. So these will get upgraded with a muster. That's cool. All right, uh, free people move again. This time they get hit. I for one and reveal. Do you lose Gandalf on this to a one and reveal, or do you wait for the next tile? So at the moment, the hunt pool looks like this. I think given that I've managed to move four times, this is the first hunt tile, and then I can use this army muster as a hide with Strider. Um, I'm inclined to lose Gandalf here. And I have plenty of cards in my hand. So, all right. So Gandalf goes. We see what the next tile is. And again, whatever gets drawn, just realize it's about 50-50. Uh, five tiles, the the three threes, and the, and, or six tiles. So six tiles would actually be better to kill off Gandalf. Um, four tiles are the same, one damage. And five tiles are uh, zero damage, which would not allow you to kill off Gandalf at all. And I think at this point in the game given free people's strategy, I think they do want to kill off Gandalf. So, um, And an eye gets drawn. So if their goal was to kill off Gandalf, 
uh, that was the right way to do it. All right, Strider is guide. All right, uh, Shadow brings the army into Fords of Eisen, and now this army comes into Western Emin Wheel to, I don't know exactly where they're going. I guess they're trying to flank um, Minas Tirith and also come into Rohan. It seems like overkill in Rohan, but I guess they could also go up to Lorien, so staying flexible with that. Um, and now free people, interesting, uses an army muster now to get their, um, get, get, uh, Minas Tirith filled up, um, and then just gets this, uh, northern unit toward Entenmores, which could be useful reinforcements into Rivendell if at some point north goes to war. And I, you know, on one hand, I thought, you'd hide with the fellowship i do like this play because the chances of rolling an army muster next round are not that high um and any will of the west i'm going to want to use for gandalf or possibly fellowship movement so regardless of the fellowship role next round uh fellowship will 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 be able to hide with strider's ability and so using this die when you need to to efficiently reinforce Minas Tirith, I think makes a lot of sense. So that's a that's a very clever clever play. That's a good play. All right, um, and then the Witch King shows up in Western Emin Wheel, and we'll see how the game proceeds. So Shadow, even though they ended up getting a slow start, managed to get their min their their first minion on round two, and then their second minion on round three. So I think that's good. Free People did a really nice job defending Lorien. I think potentially could have been even more efficient without losing that regular in Dimrodale, but still, four elites, it's hard to argue with. Um, and so I think even though the Fellowship is going a little bit more slowly because they rolled relatively low movement in the early turns, they made good use of their musters um, to make Lorien quite hard to take. Elves are at war. Curtain ships can eventually defend Dol Amroth if needed. Um, though the Elven Force Pool is starting to run a little low. Um, okay, which also, by the way, I think is a good reason to not muster the fifth elite into Lorien, but wouldn't it be nice if there was a regular in there instead? Uh, Helm's Deep didn't quite go as free people wanted, but... Um, okay, so what do you discard here as free people? I think you get rid of Axe and Bow. That feels... Um, pretty good, but maybe you're just never going to play. I will go alone. I mean, I'm still thinking about trying to crown Strider or crown Aragorn, right? Aragorn can be crowned from, from Dimrald Dale, um, directly into Minas Tirith. Now it does look like Minas Tirith is going to get besieged by this army. So maybe you don't want to put Strider there. Um, okay. Book of Mazarbo goes away. I don't know. It seems like dwarves are not being attacked at all. Um, but What's nice about getting dwarves to war is that um, you can then more freely use your elven force pool because Erebor can come defend Woodland Realm. It's not exactly the ideal way to do it, but it's okay. The other thing is if you end up with um, Gandalf over in Grey Havens and you play um, and you end up drawing Fearfire Foes, you can also get the north to war which does a great job defending the Elven Strongholds. Uh, Dale can defend Woodland Realm, and, and then this northern unit can get into Rivendell, and then you can muster up, and you can play Cairden ships. So um, given that the Fellowship is here in Dimrald Dale, it wouldn't be that hard to get a, fellow, a companion into Fangorn. I would be tempted I would be, I would be be tempted to hold on to Book of Mazarbul over Axe and Bow, because I don't think corruption is that big of an issue for the Fellowship right now. All right one eye and then rolled no more and free people does not get any movement but they do get a will of the west at least for gandalf so they are definitely rolling low on movement um but at least it's nice to get a will of the west yeah and see this is this is exactly a situation where if uh if you had kept book of mazarbol Gandalf is in Grey Havens, you then bring, you then play Book of Mazarbul, and now these two musters, you can start mustering up the dwarves. And, I, you know, I don't think a military victory is, um, you know, super likely, but uh, if you build up a big army up there, you can do something with it. 
can certainly make this difficult to take. All right, uh, but Gandalf shows up in Fangorn as normal. Uh, and then once Gandalf shows up, then Shadow properly defends against an Ent and now has uh, more regulars in the force pool so that these elites can actually uh, be downgraded. And Helm's Deep gets attacked. I think this is clever that free people is just are just passing here. You know, you you want to see where Shadow ends up attacking. Obviously, you don't love that they're getting to take all these extra actions, but uh, you sort of want to wait and see. And if Rohan gets attacked um, in Helm's Deep and goes to war, then you can start mustering up in Rohan and, and causing trouble. All right, Fighting Urkai, obviously a beautiful play. This is uh, the first card that Shadow drew, and they've used it. They've used it really well. Um, you know, you don't have too many elites, but you have a pretty big size army. This is just just great. So great play there. And they play Relentless Assault. I don't even know that it's necessary. I mean, you have seven times three rounds. You have 21 dice to roll three sixes. I don't know that I waste a card. Not waste. I mean, I don't know that I would use a card here. Um, I just don't think it's necessary. Okay, they lose two, they get two hits, um, and two back, and then, wow, great combat rolls for everybody, really. Um, I'm curious, yeah, my stats are messed up, I don't know why it, it seems to be messed up, but um, plus sixes right now. Okay, um... Free people muster, but not in Edoras. That's interesting. I would be slightly inclined to go for Edoras more, but... All right. Westamnet gets attacked from Helm's Deep. And then... Sh free, free people pass. I don't know why Why not use this other muster into Edoras while you have the chance. Um, and then Fold gets attacked, and Free People get, uh, Shadow gets to cycle the, um, Words of Power, the Littlest Eye, with the Witch King, and then Free People hide with a, uh, Palantir, and then I guess they're using a ring to move, is what's going to happen here, I would expect. Um... Southrons and Easterlings get mustered, and then here's the ring, and Fellowship gets moved, and are safe. Yeah, you know, it's really nice to get to move at least once per turn. So, and especially against one eye, I think that a, makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Southrons and Easterlings are at war, and Shadow has two rings. So I don't think the Shadow military is moving super fast, but it is nice to sort of uh, have gotten Rohan under control without too much trouble. And um, I don't know exactly where the additional victory points are coming from. It seems like Gondor is going to be five. At least they're going to try for that. And maybe... Maybe Dale in the Shire could be it. I don't know. Or maybe you end up going for Lorien. We'll see. Exciting game. All right. Uh, free people drew power too great. Um, I still would discard Axe and Bow here, or maybe I will go alone. Um, we'll see. And Shadow drew... They have three red tiles here. That's pretty nice. Um... Okay, free people got rid of I Will Go Alone. Hold on to Axe and Bow. All right, they declare out from under the army, which makes sense. Shadow allocates one eye and rolls zero. I think that's, they're pretty happy with that, I assume. Uh, seems pretty good. And then free people gets a lot of movement. So both people are getting to play the game the way they want. I think it seems like that's what people want to do. And uh, free people just starts off moving, they get missed. 
And so now as shadowed, you end up spending a little time putting uh, a little orc on Parth Celebrant. I would be inclined to a shadow uh, just because that's going to add value over the course of the round with so many, so many movements from, from free people. Uh, all right, so they're moving Nazgul around. And do they have Corsairs of Umbar? No, they don't have Corsairs of Umbar, but they do have many kings. And so that could be really nice. You fill up uh, you fill up near Harad, and then you also get South Rune and North Rune ready. And then they can merge up and attack somewhere in the in the north. Um, elves are at war, so it's it's a little tricky. Uh, all right, free people move, they get hit, a two. So do you end up taking this or do you take a random? I think we have Athalos in hand, you're at zero corruption. I think you definitely take this as corruption and they do. And then many kings as we expected. So now North Rune and South Rune can combine and uh, Near Harad has a full contingent, so that's nice third movement for the fellowship this round and they get hit good job Nazgul so that is exactly why it makes sense I think to have gotten that on there and now the fellowship gets revealed on uh, after three moves so again as corruption I think and <laughs> Ram still said the dream was alive and the dream was to get into Mordor this round which theoretically could have been possible if they didn't get revealed. And then um, they used a ring. So uh, I think the odds of that are, are quite low, but um, so be it. So they take one more corruption. They uh, move to Osgiliath. That's interesting. I don't know why I would choose Osgiliath there. Um, I would be more inclined to go to North... Uh, um, maybe Eastern Emin Wheel to, to avoid getting rerolls more easily. Cause I think shadow is coming right there. Yeah. All right. So shadow moves to uh, West Rondor and East Rune and then uh, free people pass. That's interesting. Um, all right. Minas Tirith gets attacked and goes into siege and then Pelargir gets attacked which king cycles a card and uh, that regular gets attacked. And now free people has some problems for uh, Dol Amroth coming under siege. This is interesting. This I think might have been uh, potentially an inaccuracy. Um, there was a half army movement where the army moved from, from um, East Rune to Vale of Karnan, but I would be more inclined to move uh, North Rune into East Rune, and that's still that. Then you have a full army contingent to threaten Iron Hills and Erebor. If you want to attack Dale, and that's all you care about doing, then I guess this army is big enough, so maybe that's fine. But I imagine you might want to threaten to to take Woodland Realm or Erebor through Dale, in which case it's still just as fast to merge them in East Rune. Um, okay. Uh, Gondor Elite and Dol Amroth, of course, you have to try and defend that, though it's not going to be able to do it. And um, and Shadow managed to besiege all of Gondor. There's this one regular in Osgiliath, which is cool. So I, I think it makes sense that uh, Shadow avoided that. And so I guess it was, in fact, a good play that free people uh, ended up putting them there. And the Fellowship hides. And Shadow is using... Uh, this muster using a ring with this muster, which I think is exactly right, to, presumably to try and take out uh, Dol Amroth before it gets reinforced. Uh, yep, so Dol Amroth gets attacked right now, and I don't know exactly what combat card you play. I guess you're going to play Hill Trolls, uh, or maybe no card, but it's nice to cycle cards, so we'll see. Yep, we come to kill. Power to Great gets played as a combat effect. Yeah, that makes sense. And one hit from Shadow, two hits back from Free People, and then we come to kill. No hits on that. Um, 
shadow will press i think that makes sense and get get another we come to kill but this is for an isengard unit and no cards and then wow shadow rolls three sixes that's nice free people get one hit back and then there's another press and shadow free people shadow manages to take it out so they have um six victory points and uh the fellowship is not in mordor and Minas Tirith is besieged the last two victory points will be tricky for shadow but it's definitely not looking great for free people. Um, and one turn too late, cured in ships. So this is this was uh, you know a great play for Shadow to be able to take out Dol Amroth in time. That must be a taunting, taunting free people. Uh, what do you discard as free people? Maybe Guahir, or maybe you end up pulling Gandalf in because you're getting kind of desperate. Um, all right, and then a shadow, what do you end up discarding here? I guess you're getting rid of Balrog. Um, Nazgul's search probably doesn't stall, but it could get you an extra tile. Um, all right, Balrog goes away. Axe and bow finally gets discarded. And um, all right, so three eyes and enough movement for free people. They start with a Will of the West to avoid Day Without Dawn, which makes a lot of sense. And uh, they're safe. Witch King repositions. Uh, what's going on? We're mustering free people mustered in Lasarnach and a regular into Woodland Realm. Okay, reasonable enough. And then Minas Tirith gets attacked. We'll see how it goes. Okay, Nazgul Search gets cycled. Two hits to two hits. That's a good trade for Shadow. Um, and Shadow redrew Nazgul Strike. Okay. And... Yeah, I'm thinking, could they have... Could Shadow have used... Nazgul search instead of the um, Nazgul search with a Palantir instead of using a character to just reposition. Maybe that was a inaccuracy if they had temporized a little bit. Um, okay, and then free people have managed to make it to uh, Mordor. We'll see if they end up moving an extra time to avoid cruel, cruel weather. Uh, Nazgul Strike gets played here, um, and Minas Tirith gets attacked again, Isildur's Bane, I guess Shadow is trying to cycle into Cruel Weather, or at least threaten it, and they go down to the very last round of combat, but they have great host and managed to take Minas Tirith. So it's definitely uh, like Rohan, I mean, Gondor can definitely muster up a little bit and cause some trouble. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I don't know exactly what this elite in North Dunland is doing, but we'll see. And Free People takes the risk that Shadow does not have Day Without Dawn. I mean, um, Cruel Weather. <clears throat> and they have a productive use for this muster, and they um, only have one ring left. So it's obviously a pretty big risk, but they may be in a situation where they need to play that risky, given that Shadow is at eight victory points. So it turns out that's paying off, and... Um, Free people use Ring Wraiths or I mean Shadow uses Ring Wraiths or Abroad to reposition and um, take care of this this Gondor threat. All right, um, Shadow has now drawn Day Without Dawn, and free people get rid of Elven Rope and 
Athalos, what? They got rid of Athalos. I guess the the um, the Fellowship is doing so well at this point that they're just not worried about that. They have Mithrocoat and Sting. They have Vial of Galadriel. Um, cool. Cool. I wouldn't have thought to discard Athalos when on three corruption with Strider as guide, but, you know, when you analyze it... Um, that may be perfectly good. I'm a little surprised that Shadow didn't try and play any of these red tiles. Um, that could potentially slow down uh, free people, but I guess they're just planning on winning. They're planning on winning this round. You can take Dale, you can take the Shire, and you can defend Pilar gear. So, okay. Let's see what happens. One eye, and then... Uh, no additional rolled and then um, pretty low movement for the free people so unlikely for free people to even destroy the ring next round at this point um, even more mustering that's a good muster in La Sarna. and then um, Shadow goes ahead and really defends Pilar gear well um does Shadow have enough attacks to um, win this round? They can go uh, one, two, three, four. So it turns out this was a nice, a nice play getting this army into uh, Vale of Karnan because this is exactly what they need to be able to. Um, attack it and then these three hit points worth of units will be able to take out the shire seems reasonably likely um maybe shadow will play it more cautiously knowing that free people is so unlikely to be able to um destroy the ring even next round uh which king is attacking loss or not i don't think you need to do that are you really worried about Minas Tirith being recaptured? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you have half orcs and goblin men. So I think that's going to be a pretty hard. Um, I think that would. That, I think that'd be a really hard stronghold for free people to retake. You have to use all of your dice. Um, yeah, I would. I would not be inclined to make this attack here. All right, confusion. Uh, Shadow gets zero hits, but one on themselves, and then takes two total. So that was, that was good. Gua here brings Gandalf in. That's nice. And then. Dale gets attacked and gets to retreat. That's nice. And um, I don't remember where we got an extra regular in Woodland Realm. I remember there was one muster. I guess there was another muster. Oh, I guess that was the leader in La Sarnach and a regular in Woodland Realm. So that's cool. Uh, Free People has done a good job holding on to Dane Ironfoot's guard the whole time. So if Shadow is thinking about that, um, that's not going to work. And Woodland Realm is probably strong enough to be able to withstand this. So Shadow is at 9, but they're not getting to 10 this round. It seems like Free People will be able to move once, um, see how that movement goes, and then maybe hide with Strider. And possibly destroy the ring next round. Um, yeah, and this is interesting. I I I think it would have been potentially worth um, moving before these red tiles go in. So, uh, free people moves gets a zero reveal, and then um, shadow is drawing a card. Why not just play more red tiles? If you don't have anything particularly productive to do. Um, or you could play half orcs and goblin men somewhere. I think the plan is to get 
the Shire. Oh, maybe the, yeah. I bet they were fishing for they were fishing for Black Captain commands, because if you get Black Captain commands, then you can take out the Shire this round, and that's cool. All right, so uh, Shadow moves an army towards Cardolan uh, to take out the Shire, and <clears throat> yeah. So I guess free people. Um, have to worry that black captain commands is still available and so they are making this attack into pilar gear with the idea that uh the shire could fall this round so all right that makes sense gandalf is shining into pilar gear and um let's see what happens so free people get three hits that's really nice on that attack and but shadow gets three back so um free people will probably press and uh i the shadow is asking do they decide if they retreat before or after they draw the card for the witch king and i actually can't remember um so they retreat and um gondor has recaptured gandalf has recaptured pilar gear and this is this is nice. Uh, the Witch King has to retreat into Dol Amroth, and um, Shadow plays Ring is mine. So now we're at a really interesting situation where even if the Shire falls, it's going to be tough for um, for them to for Shadow to get nine victory or ten victory points through cities, because Pelargir is going to be able to withstand. Um, a decent amount and there's more mustering to be done in Gondor so that's that's pretty cool pretty cool defense by free people and and Cairden ships so Cairden ships can show up in Pilar gear if needed um, you may also need them to defend Grey Havens no uh, you're good so um, yeah Shadow Shadow is now going to really struggle to get these last victory points they were they were in good shape but we knew that these were going to be Tough to find, these last two. So nice, really nice defense by free people. That was cool. Okay. Um, I think this is the first scouts that free people have drawn in the game. Uh, and um, all right, Shadow discards breaking. That makes sense. One eye. Oh, and they didn't have a ring, and so they couldn't even get the mouth last round because they rolled zero musters. So that's always a little sad for Shadow when they can't get the mouth. Uh, all right, here are some musters. And free people continuing to roll really low on movement. Um, they start by, what the, moving out to Tower Hills? Why do that? You were fine in Grey Havens. It doesn't matter if the Shire falls. They can get to nine. Um, I'm, I'm surprised by this. Maybe there's something I haven't thought through. Um, or they're really worried about um, Pilar gear but at this point I, I think that's actually m much riskier because I guess they have scouts they have scouts so um, but if uh, Shadow has uh, half orcs and goblin men and then also the one that gives um, Ulug Hai the maybe Ulug Hai it's already been played but if this army in Cardolan gets a little bigger and then they attack into Tower Hills possibly with Swarm of Bats even um, they could maybe take Grey Havens for the final two victory points. Um, but taking the Shire does not really matter because they get to nine, but Pilar gear is not going to fall. Um, I'm surprised by this. But I guess we needed to get Erebor short up. I might have been... Yeah, I might have been tempted to just play Vial of Galadriel and hide and move. Play Mithril Coat and Sting. And just wait and see or yeah all right so yeah so shadow is threatening to take the shire or tower hills i think is the bigger threat at this point honestly um free people hide and shadow is still attacking the shire i don't see pelargir falling but maybe it will um okay so scouts out of the Shire. Now the North is at war. Um, 
free people move here, even though you could have had Mithril Code Scene, you could have had File of Gladrill in play. Um, but got a great, great tile. I mean, that's almost certainly the best that, yeah, that's probably the best tile in the whole pool for, for free people. And why has Shadow not gotten these extra red tiles because I think at this point you have to worry as shadow how are you getting your final victory points you're not it's probably not happening this round you probably need re next round also all right um finally we get the mouth uh muster normally in minus morgul okay so maybe this is enough to take out pilar gear army's moving all right so we see it here we go this is this is great um what is happening free people are okay an army an army movement to basically prevent these from joining up that's cool that that's one unit for uh quite a lot i would have been tempted to move that regular towards dol golder just to Say you got one victory point, because what else is that one regular going to do? Um, all right, Mouth of Sauron merges up into West Herondor. Minas Tirith gets reinforced, and then we know we're going to see it. Cirdan ships coming into Pilar gear. Boom. Nice. Beautifully played. Um, and that was just a really nice, a really nice defensive Gondor. This is great. Okay, so uh, Shadow is trying to attack into Pilar gear with um, the mouth. It's eight hit points against eight hit points, two leadership against two leadership. Um, yeah, really close. All right, desperate battle. We'll see how it goes four hits back so two hits to four hits obviously this is not good for shadow and they have to stop so now maybe next round polar gear is gonna fall but yeah the the shire can be retaken potentially and so maybe tower hills was a good play after all all right um shadow allocates one eye and get rolls three more no character dice at all and no rings available but five attacks uh, including the mouth so that's fine and free people do not have enough movement to be able to destroy the ring even with very good luck so they know that they're going to have to in some way uh, either hold or retake victory points Three Corruption gets a random draw of Pippin. That's fine. Osgiliath gets attacked. And uh, Shadow wins that. But the unit gets to retreat. Another regular into Pilar gear. And um, more units gathering in Osgiliath, I guess. Everybody gathered in Osgiliath. Mithril Coat and Sting gets played here, and I think that makes sense. Uh, you're hoping to hold Pilar gear, but if you don't, then you're going to attack back in the Shire uh, with this army muster. The other thing you could do is muster once in Pilar gear. Um, you know, with Heroic Death, that seems potentially good. Um, I, might, I might have... I might have chosen to muster in Pilar gear first because I do still have more Gondor regulars. So I could have gotten another Gondor regular. All right. Full leadership, immune to Gandalf in Osgiliath. And that seems pretty good for Shadow. Um, free people are going to retake the Shire. Yeah, and so did they have they didn't have any elven regulars they had zero elven units left so we'll see if this tower hills group is enough to retake it and maybe um 
you know, maybe Shadow should have saved that reinforcement for the Shire. Um, because now Free People knows that for for Shadow to win this round, they have to both take Pilar gear and defend the Shire. All right, Angmar gets taken for one victory point. That's funny. All right, and then attack into Pilar gear. Uh, Relentless Assault seems great. Get three hits. Uh, three back, but that's not going to be enough. Um, yeah, and look at this craziness. Like, if... Yeah, I guess it wouldn't matter. I was going to say if this regular from Old Forest Road had gone to Eastern Merkwood or something like that, then after this attack, you could retreat to West Herondor and then um, army move into Dol Guldur and retake Shire and then win a military victory. That would be that would be funny. Okay, I mean it doesn't really matter because Shadow has an extra muster, so it wouldn't it wouldn't really hurt. Okay, daylight. Um, but Shadow gets three hits still, and free people get uh, very few. And now, do you retreat? I think that you retreat as free people here to save the Gandalf die. Um, you're definitely, like, almost certainly not going to be able to hold this, even with heroic death at this point. It went, it went really poorly. Um, so you have to stake your hopes on on Tower Hills, taking the Shire, and then having enough movement to be able to destroy the ring. All right, so they do retreat. I think that makes a lot of sense. Shadow is at 10. Free people have to retake the Shire. Let's see how it goes. Um, sudden Strike here is interesting, or maybe it's Heroic Death. I guess the idea is Sudden Strike and then Heroic Death, round two. Ideally, you could save your Sudden Strike until round two, and then it hits on a five or a six instead of just a six. Um but you might not have time. So, all right. Sudden strike uh, misses, and then the attack roll, you get one hit. So that's great. Free people are happy to see that, I think. And, ooh, Shadow gets two hits back. So this is a very, very even fight at this point, but free people have um, heroic death. So it's one extra hit point, which is nice. And they play it now. They get one hit. And wow, Shadow gets two hits back, so that's very good. And um, this is going to be pretty tough for free people. They need to get a hit, and they need Shadow to not get a hit. Um, they miss on that, and that is that. The Shire holds, and um, yeah, that was a that was a great game. Um, you know, it would have been it, yeah. There are there are a lot of things going on here um if free people had managed to retake the shire then i think they have decent chances of destroying the ring next round it's not guaranteed because there are those two reds in there and maybe they won't roll enough movement and they don't have any rings but they have mithril coat and sting so i think it's like chances are pretty good the ring is getting destroyed next round um and i think that free people did a beautiful job defending in Gondor and just causing a lot of trouble for, for Shadow. Shadow did a really nice job getting Gondor under siege initially, but then Lasernach just got out of control. I mean, I, I usually do not see that, but um, it really got out of control. And it would be interesting to imagine this game where um, Path of the Woses was played to get even just a few more units in Gondor um that could have been that could have been pretty interesting and also i imagine a version of the game where gandalf doesn't come down to gondor which obviously helped defend gondor significantly against the witch king um but if if um the dwarves had been at war then it would have been really tough to hold the shire for shadow because then this these dwarven you can muster up dwarven units and come in um so yeah Really interesting game. Let's look at the statistics. Um, unfortunately, there's something messed up with the um, with the stats. I don't know why everything. Oh, that's nice. So last time I looked, it was um, entirely lopsided. So I think these are shadows. The, these are shadow dice, and these are um, free people dice. And um, you can see that free uh, the shadow. This is actually shadow. Did have some really nice 
um, combat rolls, but you have to remember that a lot of some of those were like complete overkill where they needed to hit one regular and they rolled five sixes or something like that, or four or five sixes. Um, so you can see that that uh, free people were quite high on musters and army musters, which let them put up really a nice defense, but um, the ring was just a little too slow with uh, minus two and minus five on 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 character movement and um shadow i think was generally pretty happy you know plus six on on armies and musters and minus five on palantirs i think generally favorable so i don't think the dice were incredibly unfair but um definitely it it sort of required free people to play a certain strategy to adjust to their action dice um which they did, uh, which was which was really fun to see. So great game to both of the players, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, game two. Thanks so much.